We now welcome the number five ranked UFC light heavyweight contender in the world, Anthony Smith. Anthony, thank you for the time today, sir. No worries. How are you? I'm excellent. How are you? I'm good, man. In the dream. We'll take the, <laughs> we'll take the first set of questions from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cage Side Press. Hey, Anthony. How so, are you I'm good, man. What about you? I'm living. <laughs> exactly. It really does, man. I mean, let's get right to it. It's about to be a very busy month at light heavyweight. Is there more pressure to go out there and really get one of those signature finishes so you could be in the conversation? And, and, and fortunately for me, I tend, to, I tend to perform better when there's a lot of pressure on. Uh, you know, obviously, I, I would love to, to, to get that John fight back, so this is kind of a double-edged sword. It, it definitely opens up a lot of a lot of parody and fun conversations and different matchups and, and, and brings a little bit more excitement to the division. Um, but let's not forget that it's bringing more excitement to the division because there's a lot more unknown. Uh, John Jones kind of was the, was the, was the staple in the, in the division and, and people just assumed he was always going to win. So unfortunately it gets more exciting when nobody knows really who's going to win. For sure. I understand that. I want to shift gears on top of fighting and working as an analyst. I know that you're kicking off your new podcast with Laura Sanko. Can you just talk about what it's like to have that platform and work on a program like that with a mind like her? Uh, it's, it's been amazing, man. We kind of, we kind of got backed up a little bit just with her busy schedule and, and then me taking this fight. So, um, we're going to be firing that back up as soon as I'm done here. Um, but it's been fun. I've known Laura for a long time. We kind of came up in the same scene together. Uh, you know, a lot of the fans and stuff don't know, but Laura was, Laura was quite the fighter herself in, in, in her fighting days. So uh, we're both Midwest, you know, Midwest fighters. We, we, we grew up a couple, you know, a couple hours from each other. Uh, and, and she's got a, an incredible mind for the sport. She's really, really good at what she does. She's a great reporter, but she's also a good host. Uh, she, she, you know, she directs the conversation really well and, and keeps me on track. A bad habit of rambling and bouncing from topic to topic. So. She does a good job of keeping a leash on me and keeping me focused. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, you know, along with being an analyst and, and you know, and fighting it, it's, it's going to be kind of cool to kind of build my own baby, you know, all by myself and, and, and just her and I building something that's just ours. Um, and, and it's fun. There's, there's less direction. We can kind of take it where we want. If there's not a lot of fight stuff to talk about, we can ramble about, you know, mom and dad life and, and families and, you know, just funny stuff that I think that a lot of people want to get a perspective on that, that we don't typically get to give uh, working as analysts or reporters, you know, like sometimes people are just curious what we do day to day. Uh, so I, I think it'll be a lot of fun. Looking forward to hearing even more coming soon. Um, to get back to the division, Alexander Rakic, a tough guy. A lot of people feel like he should still be on his win streak. What does he bring that makes him so dangerous? Uh, he, you know, he's got a couple of things that make him pretty dangerous. I think for me, the thing that makes him most dangerous are his intangibles. You know, he, he really believes in himself. Uh, he's, he's confident. He's got a chip on his shoulder. Uh, he believes in his power. Uh, and, he, and he really believes that he's the future of the division. Now, whether that's true or not, you know, I mean, we'll find out on Saturday. But um, the, the fact that he believes it makes him dangerous. Uh, you, you couple all that stuff with. His incredible knockout power, his ability to close distance with his kicks. Uh, he could fight from both stances. Uh, he, he just, he's, a, he's an incredible athlete, well-conditioned. Um, he's not completely a fish out of, out of the water on the ground. Um, so, you know, he brings interesting stuff to the table. Finally, talking about the title picture, I think a lot of people see it as the upcoming fight, uh, Santos versus Glover. Probably that one gets the next top content, no, the next shot at the title. For yourself, do you see yourself fighting another one of these guys before getting back to the belt if you win on Saturday? Um, it's a possibility. It's a possibility. You know, I, I would think it's going to take me no more than two. Uh, Rakic and one more. Um, but if, if, if Glover and Tiago get into a snooze fest or the winner gets injured or... You know, something like that. I, it really depends on who wins that fight. Um, if Glover wins that fight, if I'm being very honest with you guys, I will, I will sit down and wait my turn uh, and, and go do what I got to do to get my title shot. Uh, I, you won't hear a lot from me uh, arguing about 
getting a shot over Glover, not just because he just beat me, but be just, you know, it, it, he's done enough. He's done enough. Uh, so I'll keep my loud mouth shut. If, if it's Tiago, then, then there's a small argument there. Uh, I would have more wins than he had since his title fight. Um, he would also argue that he won that fight. Um, I have the more high profile win. That's also a finish would be over Alexander Gustafson, but I also had the hiccup, uh, with the Glover fight, but you know, who knows? Who knows? If it's Tiago, there's 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 a somewhat of an argument there. If it's Glover, I'll sit down and shut up. Appreciate it, Anthony. Good luck. Thank you. And we'll take our next set of questions from Augusto Nias Gay with Somos MMA. Hi, Anthony. How are you? I'm good. Uh, my first question is: This will be your second fight during the the pandemic, but the first one in the apex. What do you think about the, the smaller octagon? Is it something that you take into account when you make your, your fight plan? No, not at all. Um, <clears throat> I know for a lot of guys, the, the smaller cage does make a difference, and, and I can absolutely see how that's the case. But uh, I've actually fought in smaller cages than, than the one that's in the Apex before. Um, so I, I, I think a smaller cage benefits me anyways. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of the in-your-face walk you down get dirty type of fighter so uh the shorter the distance i got to go the better for me uh he's the one that's, that wants to stay long and fight from the outside and be rangy and and so uh if there is a benefit or a disadvantage uh in the smaller cage i'm the one that will benefit and uh, anthony which aspects do you consider to be the key for for winning uh, with, I mean, without getting too much into my game plan, it's just being being technically sound and, and not losing my temper. You know that that sometimes what gets me into trouble a little bit. I, I I get I get and it's about the only aspect of my life that I do lose my temper. It's all anyone can do to even get me frustrated in regular day to day life. I'm just usually a pretty happy go lucky guy. But uh, for whatever reason, I have kind of a, a hair trigger when it comes to controlling my temper in the octagon. So. Uh, I just got to stay technical and stay focused. Um, I think with a guy like Alexander Rackage being so dangerous, uh, it makes it a lot easier to stay focused the whole time because you can't make any mistakes with a guy like that. Um, so it, that's really what it comes down to. Just, you know, it, just being myself and, and, and being technical and, and, and just not making any mistakes and staying focused for 15 minutes. Uh, and is there anything that you need to be careful of? Yeah, yeah I probably should let him knock me out. Uh, that's probably, that's probably the biggest thing. Uh, he's just, he's, he's powerful. So I got to make sure I'm not taking too many clean shots. Okay. And uh, Anthony, I, I want to ask you, uh, how was your, your preparation after your last fight, after that loss? Uh, how, how did you prepare for this one? Not only physically, but, but also mentally. Uh, what about that, that process? Well, you know, I was able to go back to Denver and do my entire training camp there um, and, and, and get back to, to where I'm the most successful. Uh, I wasn't able to do that in the last fight because of the pandemic. So uh, I'm back there with and, and really mentally, it's, it's just it's spending all those weeks uh, away from home and, and with Mark Montoya. That's it's the best thing for my mentality. It, it, that guy's just such a he, he's, he's like my Yoda. Uh, he, he just has such a good perspective on life and, and, and he, he can tell when I'm having an off day. He can tell when my mind is somewhere else. He can tell when something's bothering me. And then, and then we just work through it. You know, Mark is, Mark is a mentor and, and, and a father figure to me. It's so it's that that's helped a lot. And, and just really, sometimes you just got to work that out in your head. You know, you got to figure it out on your own. So I'm, uh, I'm mentally emotionally and physically in, in, in a better spot than I've been in a really long time. I'm, I'm well rested. I'm healthy. Uh, I'm really happy. Life is going well. My family's safe. My family's healthy. My kids are, are funny. My, my wife is, is, is doing her thing, you know, like it, everybody's in a good place. And, and that's not something I can necessarily say going into the last fight. Great to hear that. And uh, talking about the, the division, were you surprised when you heard that John Jones was vacating the title? Yeah, yeah, I was. Uh, um, John Jones is kind of one of those guys when he gets something, uh, you're going to have to peel it out of his cold, dead hands uh, to get it back from him, uh, which is what, which is the mentality that makes him so great. You know, he's, he, once he's got something, it's his, and you're going you're gonna to have to take it from him. So that was, a, that was a cool look into where John Jones is at personally, where he was willing to, to make the type of, the de type of decision that doesn't 
that doesn't necessarily benefit him that much and it does benefit a lot of other people um so uh, as, you know I, i'm not typically the guy that's got a whole bunch of nice things to say about john jones but that was the, that's a that's a noble thing to do and and he could have held on to that title for a long time and gone up to heavyweight and done this thing and you know talked about coming back down and not coming back down and drag everybody out for a long time um but he didn't do that so you know that's uh it was a surprise to me and and i think that 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 says a lot of positive things about where John Jones is right now uh, in his life. And, and, and it, was a, it was a cool thing. And, and how do you think he will do in, uh, at heavyweights? Well, John, Jones, John Jones is the best in the world, man. And that's, that's not just in my weight class. That's, that's across all weight classes. I, I think there's some interesting challenges uh, that, are, that are at heavyweight for him. Um, aside from the top two guys, three guys, maybe. Uh, I think John Jones does does whatever he wants to any other heavyweight in the division. Uh, I think, you know, your guys like Francis Ngannou, Curtis Blades, um, Stipe, uh, I think I think those guys create some some interesting problems for him, just some of them in size, some of them in, in power and mobility. So, you know, some of them in just the, their, their body types um, and some of them in their skills and, and I, I think those three guys create some interesting problems for him. Um, but I, I, I'm not, you know, John Jones can beat any of those guys. Thank you very much, Anthony, and good luck on Saturday. You're welcome. And we will take our next set of questions from Pablo Santamaria with Noti MMA Ecuador. Hello, Anthony. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Uh, I'm okay, too. Thanks for asking. Uh, the first thing I want to ask is you're coming from a hard defeat from Lover. Yeah. And what you learn from that fight? Um, well, that's kind of an open-ended question. Uh, but you know, I I gotta stay focused. I guess if that that's the one thing I would take from that, I I, I gotta do a better job of staying focused and not making silly mistakes. What do you consider Rakic's main strengths? Um. Yes. Uh, I would say. I would say his size uh, and, and his, uh, his his mobility and power. He moves he moves like a middleweight, uh, but he's he's every bit of a light heavyweight as you can get, uh, and, and he's extremely powerful. That, uh, those are the, the the top three things that, that make him or that make him dangerous. Okay, and with John leaving the category, uh, where do you think a victory over Rakic puts you in? Um. You know, it puts me. It puts me in a good spot. It puts me in a position to to get into a number one contender fight um, if it's extremely impressive uh, and something. You know, some crazy stuff happens in the other fight that's going on. I, I think it possibly puts me in title contention, uh, but you know, uh, likely gets me a number. An, you know, another main event uh, in a in an opportunity to fight for a title. And do you think your experience will be will play a role in getting the victory? Yeah, absolutely. I got I got more knockouts than Alexander Rakic has fights, total. Um, so I, you're not doing anything that I haven't seen. He's not gonna. He doesn't bring anything new to the table. He's he, he's he's not super flashy. He's not fancy. He's not super tricky. Uh, but that's not saying he's not dangerous. Uh, so. On, on my end of it, I, I need to be smart and use my experience and know that I have made those mistakes before uh, and, and get caught up playing games. And uh, you know what they say, you play dumb games, you get dumb prizes. Uh, so yeah. I need to stay smart. But as far as experience goes, I, I, I think that uh, that's absolutely an advantage. Okay, I get it. And what's your prediction for the fight on Saturday and for the title fight again between Dom Reyes and Jan Blacko? I've been kind of saying this all week. I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of feeling like there's going to be an upset here. I, I feel like Jan Blahovich is, is is going to get it done. I just, I like, I like the way those two guys match up. Um, I haven't broken them down, you know, super deep yet. Um, really seen what that's going to look like, but uh, just from the outside looking in, just you know, really, you know, in a, in a, in a uh, I, I just like how they match up as far as Jan being. He's really tight and fundamental, and, and he likes to fight at boxing range. And, and Dominic Reyes does a real uh, when he can keep people at kicking range. Uh, and it does seem like 
Perez doesn't do that well fighting back and up. So uh, Blahovich is absolutely going to make him back up. That's just his style. He's better on the ground, I think, and I think he's a better wrestler. Uh, as far as the prediction for my fight, was that the question? Yes. Uh, that also I don't know. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways it could go. Uh, but I would, uh, you know, I would imagine that we're going to end up uh, kind of playing that, you know, that that who's eager game, and, and, and I'm not going to get caught up into that. So uh, uh, I see myself winning a couple different ways. I just don't know which way it's going to be.